Welcome to Upticks with Jake Falcon, founder and CEO of Falcon Wealth Advisors. In this podcast, we help high net worth individuals overcome financial complexities. We do this by enhancing financial literacy and discussing topics in a language free from industry jargon. Join us as we help explain exactly what having a solid financial plan means as Jake draws from years of experience in helping hundreds of individuals get financially organized and focused on their goals. We hope you find Uptick's educational, entertaining, and shareable. Now, on to the show. Welcome back to the show. This is episode 257, How to Manage Your Cash with Higher Fed Rates. Corey, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. I am uh, excited to be here today and to talk about earning interest on your cash. Right. And thank you to all of our viewers and listeners out there. Our subscriber count continues to grow on our weekly email newsletter called Upticks. comes out every Tuesday at 10 o'clock. That's where you can find this episode, um, along with other content from the rest of our team. So if you're not already subscribed to our email, certainly let uh, our team know via service at falconwealthadvisors.com, and they can get you subscribed. If you prefer just to watch this on YouTube or listen to this on your favorite podcast platform, you certainly can just subscribe there as well. Five-star rating, uh, a review, a thumbs up, all of that is greatly appreciated. Uh, Our mission at Falcon uh, Falcon Wealth Advisors is to enhance financial literacy. And this show is one of the ways that we're able to do that at scale. So thank you for tuning in. And please feel free to share our content with your friends and family members. Corey, before we go into the Fed's recent decision to hike interest rates again, what's going on in your personal life? I played tennis twice last week, Jake, uh, coming back from my injury. So that was good. My leg held up just fine. Uh, I was encouraged by that. And I've started a new book that was recommended to me actually by a client. Uh, And the book, I don't know if you've read this, Jake, the book is called The Ascent of Money. No, I saw that in our newsletter and I was curious. I'm glad you brought that up. So what's the premise? Yeah, so this book was written, I believe it was in 2007. It might have even been in the summer of 2008 when it was first released. Uh, And then more recently, there's kind of a revised version that the author went back and updated. Uh, But it largely is just speaking to the, uh, obviously, the ascent of money, the title of the book. But there's a lot of financial history there. Um, There's a lot of market history included. And also, I'm sure, I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm sure what the author will predict is going to happen in the future. Not that they know, but I'm sure they'll find that as I get further in the book. Are you enjoying it? I am. Good. Yes. Yeah, very much. I Interestingly, I have found that while, of course, it's crucial and important to understand what's happening uh, you know, in the markets and the economy in present day, I've also found it interesting and useful to study market history as well. Absolutely. The, the sad Last reality, few books I've read have been that way. I'll give you a sad reality, though, because the, the whole point of studying history supposedly is so that we don't repeat ourselves. But the big problem in the human condition, Corey, is that history does repeat itself. So I don't want to burst your bubble there. (laughs) But uh, no, that's all right. I still find it useful. Oh, I think it's amazing. I agree. I love reading about history and and learning things uh, that happened in the past as well. The hope is that we don't repeat ourselves. But I'm telling you, it's the human condition. It it feels like things cycle uh, and come in and out of favor. And we make mistakes and you have wars and all these things. And it's just, again, it's the human condition. It happens. So crazy. what's it with you? You know, not much, uh, really kind of in the high end, high end gear here of golf season. So I've been playing a lot of golf, been working a lot. Uh, it's nice that the days are longer. Um, so definitely, um, can get more done. I, I like it in the summertime versus in the winter when the days are shorter. Uh, my travel schedule is slowing down. I've got some small regional trips here coming up, but that's nice that, um, you know, Rachel and I just kind of hanging out, laying low. Uh, I haven't watched Oppenheimer or Barbie yet. As of the recording of this episode, they're kind of all the rage. Um, it'll take a while for us to get this edited and through compliance. But I, I take it, have you watched either of those movies yet? I have not. So maybe I want to watch, I kind of want to watch both of them now. I wanted to watch Oppenheimer, but I keep hearing so much about Barbie that I actually kind of want to watch it now, which I didn't want to at first, but I I don't know. So not to watch both. You could uh, circle a weekend on the calendar, Jake, and just do a double feature. Just go yeah, knock them out back to back. I got too much work to do. I, I, I'm replying I to clients' emails. I'm doing podcasts, golfing, but hopefully I, I can carve out some time. I'm trying to. Rachel was wanting to see Miss Mission Impossible also a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago, and we haven't seen that yet either. So there's actually three movies 
But again, I don't think she wants me to go to Barbie. I think she's going to go with one of her friends. But um, I definitely want to see Oppenheimer. So hopefully I can get hopefully I can get in to see one of those, and uh, we'll do a review here. Uh, we'll we'll announce it before, so no spoiler alerts. We'll uh, we'll announce it before. Perfect. But, uh, I do want to I do want to check those out. So that's kind of what's the latest with me. But but for today's topic, as of the recording of the show, the Fed has recently raised rates uh, another quarter of a percentage point. And Corey, this is actually now a 22-year high for the Fed funds rate. So how old were you 22 years ago, Corey? I was young. It's a good question. I was, <laughs> uh, let, let's think about that, 10, 8, 8. No. 22 years ago? No, That's I not think right. you were no, 12. No, 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 no. I was 12. 12 years old. See, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to reverse age myself. <laughs> so you don't even younger. remember the last I was 12. Time. You don't remember no. rates like this. So no, the interest rates were not my priority then. <laughs> right. Uh, and I think I was probably around 21. So, you know, I was still in college. I'm sure I probably was studying economics, but I probably didn't really care that much about interest rates either. But today I do. Today, we want to talk about the various ways to invest your hard-earned cash into something better than just leaving it in your piggy bank, or also known as your checking or savings account where many of the banks, Corey, still aren't paying very much interest. And so uh, now higher interest rates, they do punish borrowers. So if you're out there trying to get a mortgage or if you're rolling credit card debt or maybe even buying a car, interest rates have gone up, which is probably slowing some of that activity. It is slowing some of that activity. But if you're a saver, like most of our clients, um, it's actually a, a tremendous opportunity to earn some money on your cash. And actually you can now earn more money on your cash than inflation if you invest it correctly, right? So that's what we wanna talk about today. We don't wanna see excess of three to six months. We don't wanna see more than that sitting in your savings or checking account if they're not paying you four, five, 6% interest. So today, Corey, uh, let's dive right into it. We wanted to talk about some ways that you can invest that hard in cash. And the first one that I wanna talk about is something that's actually very common to our clients, but it's not something that's been spoken about uh, a lot in the last decade, and that are CDs or certificates of deposit, uh, which actually we can buy those for you at Falcon Wealth Advisors. So we can shop the, the banking landscape and buy CDs. And we like CDs for multiple reasons, um, but they're typically issued by banks. Uh, you do get some FDIC coverage, so there is some protection there typically up to the normal $250,000 limits. Um, and they're paying, you know, around 4% plus. Um, the negatives for CDs, Corey's, if you cash out of them early, you typically have to pay a fee or a penalty. So you want to be aware of that. And sometimes the banks do this, and I don't like them, like them because of this. And sometimes they'll just roll your CDs and won't even call you, or, mm. or they'll just send you a notice like, hey, we're going to buy you another two-year CD and your money's locked up. Um, but if you have a good banking relationship, uh, it's certainly not a bad time to reach out to your bank and see what their CD rates are. If you don't want to have to move money around and you just want to keep it at your bank, uh, CDs aren't a bad option. And one other quick item, Corey, before I let you chime in here, uh, you can also ladder the maturity date. So if you have $100,000 that you want to put in CDs, you don't need, necessarily need to put all 100000 in the same CD. You could buy a, a three-month or six-month or one-year or two-year or five-year it's called laddering. So you'd want to stagger out these maturity lengths just in case interest rates start to lower, Corey. I don't want to see you lock in your money for a year or two, and then you go to reinvest it and rates are much lower. So that's called laddering. I think we've talked about it on upticks before. Um, but CDs are really a popular thing right now, or they should be. And it's not something, Corey, in your career, we've actually talked much about. But do you want to chime in before we go to our second one? No, I, it's, um, well, yes, I do actually, Jake, the, uh, just the chime in I would add, and I've probably talked about it on the show before, but I, I know I've joked with many clients that I've been waiting for higher interest rates my whole career, uh, because it's all that everybody said was coming, uh, back going back to 2010. And really we saw the opposite for the last decade or so. So now that we've seen interest rates move higher, one, like you've mentioned, Jake, it presents an opportunity for savers, but two, it also lends itself to the, uh, you know, the laddering strategy that we ultimately take for our clients. Good. Good. Yeah. So CD is definitely something to consider. Now, again, if you don't want to go through your bank or if you want to shop all the CD rates, we can do that here for you at Falcon Wealth Advisors. So certainly let us know. You can email service at falconwealthadvisors.com. That actually goes directly to our investment management group. Say, hey, I'm curious, what kind of CDs can you guys get me? I've got some cash. 
um, and they can certainly follow up with you and let you know what's out there. Corey, what's another way that people could invest their hard earned cash right now? Another way is in treasury bonds, uh, which are issued by the United States treasury. Uh, so when we look at interest rates that treasury bonds are paying, very similar to a CD, although they're issued by the treasury instead of, the instead of a bank, um, but the bonds that the ultimately the government issues uh, and really a lot of the revenue that's generated from those bonds is what's used to fund operations of the government. But the interest rates on those treasury bonds really depends upon how far out it is that you're looking. But exactly to the point that we've made here about the CDs, uh, we've seen very much the same thing with treasury bonds because interest rates have come up quite a bit. There's a lot more interest that can be earned there. And we really like the security and the safety of those instruments, ultimately with them being issued directly from the government. Yeah, so in our opinion, that theoretically could be safer than CDs because the idea is that the U.S. government's going to go out of business far after your bank will. Your bank will fail more than likely before the United States government. And so uh, we do like treasury bonds typically better, Corey. There's also not a penalty or a fee if you want to sell it early. Now, the value of that treasury bond may fluctuate up and down, but you're not necessarily locked in. If you need the money, you don't have to pay a penalty to get it back out. Um, and again, we're talking about your savings, your cash, right. relatively short-term money, right? We're not talking about your IRA, you know, long-term money. Now, maybe some of your IRA is short-term if you're retired, but we're really talking about money that you may need in three months, six months, a year, two years from now. Maybe you're going to buy a new car. Maybe you've got uh, a house you're, you're looking to make a purchase on, or maybe you're getting ready for retirement and you're just sitting on some cash. This is what we're talking about. Um, so again, there's an opportunity there both in CDs and treasury bonds uh, to do that. Now you can go out to treasurydirect.gov and buy your own cool. treasury bonds or your friends at Falcon Wealth Advisors. We buy treasury bonds all the time and we can certainly do that for you directly here as well. Um, and la we ladder those maturities, Corey, just like you commented on uh, as well. Now, if you've been a loyal subscriber to Upticks, you've also heard us talk about I-bonds and I-bonds were awesome about a year and a half ago, Corey. They were paying around 9%, I think, was it 10? It was over 9%. Yeah. So these things are similar to treasury bonds. They're issued by the United States government, and they're basically inflation bonds is, is what the I kind of indicates there. And so um, because inflation spiked, so did the yield on these I bonds. Now, sadly, because inflation has started to cool dramatically, I mean, now inflation, Corey, is under 4%, I believe, um, you can actually not, you're actually not getting it's good of interest on I bonds. And what are I bonds paying now, Corey, as far as interest? Or they are paying 4.3%. And they yeah. it basically resets every two years. Or I'm sorry, twice per year. So it's 4.3% until October of 23. Yeah. So every six months, these things reset. So even if you bought it a year and a half ago or so and you were making around 9%, now to Corey's point, you're maybe only making four. Um, so I bonds are not nearly as attractive as they were. Uh, we think that you can do better in just flat out treasury bonds or maybe CDs. And if you own an I bond, it might be time to sell it. So again, you have to own own it for at least a year. Um, and if you sell it before five years, you do have to forfeit three months of interest. But if your interest is going down, right? If it's only 4% and maybe it's going to get reset to three or two, maybe it's okay to, uh, again, forfeit a few months of interest to go turn around and reinvest that into something that's going to pay you five or 6%, for example. So I think now is a good time to review your I-bonds, certainly if you've owned them for at least a year. And we're happy to do that as fiduciaries. And again, as fiduciary, we're just looking out for your best interest. And we may say, you know what? Uh, you've got 10,000 in an I-bond, go ahead and hold on to it. Let's see what happens in October. Or we may say, you know what? We can cash that in and we can do better. Let's go ahead and cash it in now. So we're happy to review that. Again, simply email service at falconwealthadvisors.com and our investment management group can go over the pros and cons or our financial planners or frankly, Corey, you and I can go over that with clients as well. Um, so good, I-bonds, right? They, they were all the rage about a year and a half ago. They're not nearly as popular as they were. And so again, I think now is a good time to review your I-bonds and just understand what you own and how much it's paying you. You don't wanna sleep on it because what'll happen is those I-bonds may go down to paying you 1%. And if you just put it in there and forget it, you could be costing yourself a lot of money and interest earning that a different way. Good, Corey, what's another example of how we can invest that hard earned cash right now? Uh, another example is corporate bonds. Uh, so the same way that the United States Treasury issues bonds, uh, companies will issue bonds as well. It's a way that they raise capital to invest in their business. 
And the, there is a spread between what treasury rates pay, because ultimately they're backed by the government, and a corporation, because obviously the solvency of any corporation that's issuing a bond, if you own it, is going to be important. Uh, so when the bond matures, your principles return to you and you are receiving the interest rate along the way. Uh, the point there being, though, uh, the same way that we've talked today about I-bonds, CDs, treasuries, the same is true with corporate bonds and that we've seen interest rates move uh, meaningfully higher over the last year or two. And, you know, we are ultimately looking for opportunities uh, when we're buying corporate bonds for clients. They fit on the ladder where we're investing in that cash for folks. Uh, but ultimately, there can be some really great opportunities in the world of corporate bonds as well, particularly in an interest rate environment like the one we're in right now. Right, right. And this would be for cash that you that you're not that you're yeah. not going to need in the next three months or six months. This might be for saying, say, hey, Jake, Corey, I've got 50,000 that I've just saved up. I may need it, I may not need it, but I, everything else is good. My cash flow is good. My, you know, everything's fine. So this is something that maybe you don't want to put in the stock market, Corey, mm -hmm. but you want to earn mm -hmm. a little bit more than what a treasury bond's paying. So again, there's a little bit more risk there because now you're banking on a corporation staying in business. Um, it typically will pay you a little bit higher interest. And so again, that's something that we look at and that we weigh for our clients. But if you say, hey, I've got, I'm sitting on some cash. I don't have it earmarked for any goal. Uh, I can afford to take a little bit of risk, but I don't want the wild fluctuations of the stock market. A corporate bond may be something suitable for you to consider. Good core. I'm glad yep. you brought that up. So again, and, and the opposite kind of that, or, or something that's similar but different, or the opposite, is a municipal bond. So a municipal bond is issued typically by government, right, or a municipality. So the city of Kansas City could issue municipal bonds for the sewer system. Uh, or the water, right? And so what's great about municipal bonds though, are they typically are tax-free. So you don't pay any interest, or excuse me, you don't pay any taxes on the interest at the state, federal, or local level. So you certainly wouldn't want to buy these in an IRA or Roth IRA or 401k. You'd be buying these in a brokerage account or a taxable account. And they typically, or at least currently, they make the most sense for people in the highest tax bracket. So today you'd want to, if you're already, if you're you know gainfully employed, and let's say you're you're peaking out tax brackets and you're paying 40% plus or whatever it is, um, that's who a municipal bond may make sense for. But there's something called a tax equivalent yield where we will weigh the differences. So we'll say, okay, you can get this much in a treasury or corporate bond, Corey, and you can get this much in a municipal bond. So this is a tax equivalent yield based on your tax bracket. And then we'll help you make a good informed decision if you should buy a municipal bond. So they're not great today, but they do make sense for a subset of the population. Again, it's all going to boil down to what tax bracket you're in. So even if most of our clients, Corey, don't like to pay any taxes, when I get it. Uh, but if you're in a lower tax bracket, sometimes it makes sense for you to earn a higher interest, even if it is taxable versus a lower one in a tax-free bond. So again, we'll crunch the numbers for you. Uh, your friends at Falcon Wealth Advisors can do that. But again, municipal bonds, if you're in a very high tax bracket, uh, it could be a really good time to buy those as well. Do you have anything do you want to add to that, Corey? Just a quick note. One would be, uh, you talked, Jake, about the triple tax exemption. Uh, that can largely depend upon the state that someone lives in, the bonds that they're purchasing, et cetera. So I think you've, you've made the point on the show here today, Jake, but I think particularly when we're talking about corporate bonds, uh, municipal bonds, some of the specific types of vehicles somebody can invest money in to earn more interest on their cash, be careful, work with someone who ultimately knows how to evaluate the landscape. I wouldn't encourage anybody who's watching the show here today to go and start picking their own corporate and municipal bonds uh, because there's risk inherently that's involved. But obviously what we're talking about today is ways that uh, we ultimately want to help our clients earn more interest on the cash that they have uh, that, and you know, earn more interest on their cash. Yeah, that's a good point, Corey, right? So yes, you don't, definitely don't want to go this at alone. And you don't want to work with somebody that's not acting as a fiduciary, even on your bonds. Some advisors, mm. uh, some old school advisors will uh, tell you that they're not going to charge a, an ongoing advisory fee on bonds. But what's happening then is they're acting as a broker. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but you have to remember now they they put on their salesman hat and they might just be flipping bonds to earn a commission. So again, you want to be working with a fiduciary on your bonds, reviewing them someone that understands the tax implications, uh, the different environment, the different types of bonds, they can help you manage that um, for you. So that's good, good point, Corey. And we do not, absolutely do not recommend buying bonds on your own because it's a whole 
It's a whole wild market, just like the stock market. And you can make some big mistakes if you don't know what you're doing. So you can be very careful with that as well. Good. The last uh, way to invest in cash or just for topics today, there's many, many more topics that we could talk about, but this show would last way too long, Corey, is um, stocks, right? So if you don't need the cash at all, and you say, Jake, I've sat on this rainy day fund for 10 years. Um, maybe you've got 100,000. You say, you know what? I want to keep 50,000 in a treasury bond or in cash even, but I can take 50,000 and I can go put it in stocks. Um, again, we would diversify your holdings. Maybe we buy some dividend paying stocks. Maybe we buy some growth stocks, but this would be ideal, ideally for the long-term investor, someone that's not going to need this money for sure for at least five years and beyond. So if you're sitting on a big, a pile of cash in your savings and checking account and everything else is taken care of, maybe it's time to carve out some of that cash and just go put it in the stock market and let's let compounding interest take over. Uh, let's invest in good companies that we uh, are optimistic about and we think that will do even better than four or five or 6% uh, that are earning in some of these bonds that we've been talking about today, Corey. Good, yeah, and we kind of talked about the yields, but yeah, so that's the range, isn't it, Corey? So a treasury bond is typically yielding anywhere from you know, a little, little less than four up to around five corporate bonds are probably, you, go ahead. No, I was going to say you are, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting though, because we talked about a, an inverted yield curve uh, on the show before, which is really just a fancy way of saying that short-term interest rates are higher than long-term interest rates. Uh, but exactly to your point, Jake, the, you know, a one-year treasury bond is yielding around 5.3% today. Yeah, which is pretty awesome. Um, now, again, that's gross. So again, if you're if you're hiring us to do it, our costs will come out of that. And we'll obviously that's different for everybody, but we'll be transparent with that. Um, but yeah, but but that's what you have to be careful though, Corey, because I don't want everyone to be buying one year treasury bonds. No. Because the 10 year treasury bond, I think, is yielding less than four percent today. So yes. that's what you're talking about, an inverted yield curve. So it's weird that longer dated bonds are actually paying less, but that doesn't mean that you don't go buy a five year treasury bond, for example, or a three year. Because we don't know in 10 years, that three or 4% bond may be a great thing. I mean, you, you may be very happy that you bought that. So you want to continue to ladder, but you're right, Corey, you can, you can buy relatively short-term bonds and make pretty good interest right now. So for example, if you know you're going to need money in a year or 18 months, you should feel pretty confident looking at these treasury bonds and considering making 4 or 5% on your money while it's just sitting there. That's not a bad investment in our opinion. Now, again, all this is going to boil down to your financial plan. And this podcast is not designed to give you advice. It's designed to educate you and enhance your financial literacy. So hopefully today we've done that because again, we don't want people just sitting on cash because the banks haven't caught up and they're not paying high interest typically on your cash. And so you may be making still 0.1%. And so we hate to see that in a client's bank account, them costing themselves money because if inflation is running at three or 4%, and you're not making at least that, your, your money's actually eroding and you're losing money by not having it in something that's keeping up with the rate of inflation. All right, good. I know we got to wrap up. Corey, is there any parting comments before we wrap up today's show? Just a quick one that's aligned with what you just said, Jake, which is that in the environment that we're in today, I think probably virtually anybody who's watching or listening to this should evaluate what kind of interest that they're earning on their cash. Go check your checking account, your savings account, the money that you have in the bank, in the environment that we find ourselves in, it's much more competitive for deposits. So some banks are paying a lot more interest than others. Uh, I would, spe you know, speculate at least here, Jake, that uh, you know, for the most part, if someone's not earning much interest on their cash, it's just because they haven't evaluated what they're earning or they haven't made any changes. But I, I would, my starting point, I would encourage everyone who's watching this to go and evaluate this for yourself. Uh, your friends at Falcon Wealth Advisors lean on us to help give you, of course, the uh, fiduciary advice that you are accustomed to. But I would really want to drive home the point that this is something that you should be evaluating. It's something that you should be taking advantage of. And it's frankly silly not to. Yeah. And that's what that's a pet peeve of mine because these banks, Corey, they get you because you get so enthralled with ACHs and automatic bill pays and credit cards linked that it's really hard to fire your bank. And so I feel like that's why they don't feel the need to pay you higher interest because they know they've got you in their grips that they're banking on people being complacent, right? And saying, you know what, Corey, I've already got a savings, a checking, a money market there. I've got all my all my payments are automatic. I don't want to, I don't want to switch banks. And I get it. And so I, I agree with you, Corey, that that'd be a, a very vigilant person and saying, hey, I'm gonna go across the street. They're paying twice as much interest, their fees are lower. That's all fine and dandy. 
But what I would encourage the viewer to do is say, hey, let's just start with a little bit, right? Let's not fire your whole bank. Yeah. I know you're not saying that, but let's not fire your whole right. bank. But let's take some money out of that bank and let's go earn some more with it. And that's what's great about Falcon Wealth Advisors is we can do that very easily. Like you don't have to go close all your bank accounts and cancel everything. No, just pull some of that $100,000 that you have sitting there earning 0.1% and let's go put it in something earning four. That's what we're suggesting, right? And so, um, but I, the banks, that's a pet peeve because Rachel and I are looking at that right now because um, of her business banking relationship. And it's, you know, we found that, you know, there may be another bank that's better, but everything's already set up and it's like, oh, this is frustrating. It's going to be too painful to move. Maybe we should just leave it. So, um, but anyways, that's a whole nother episode maybe on that. Good. Well, thank you. Anything else, Corey? I don't. All right. Well, thank you again for joining me. Thank you all for tuning in. As always, if you have any questions, our team at Falcon Wealth Advisors is here to support you. You can simply email us at service at falconwealthadvisors.com. Our website is www.falconwealthadvisors.com. Thanks again, Corey, for joining me, and we hope all of you have a great week. Thank you for listening to Upticks. Click the subscribe button to be notified when new episodes become available. Also, be sure to visit our website, falconwealthadvisors.com, and click the Contact Us button if you'd like to meet with Jake and his team.